the month of hope and mercy, Ramadan. From every mosque you help me build, we hear a new Adan. I am a leader of the future in my own right. Because orphans like me are learning to read and recite. With access to clean water, so we can wash and drink. The world is at our feet, and we can learn and think. World pandemics, world wars, emergencies affect us all. And when things got tough here at home, you answered the call. And the food you sent us kept our bodies alive. Through your generosity and kindness, our elders survive. From starting my own business and empowering our community, to chasing dreams that are vivid, because your love is our dignity. Our donors, your mercy is how Penny Appeal makes all of this hope possible. This Ramadan, donate to one of Penny Appeal's amazing campaigns and make a real impact to people's lives. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and welcome back to Breaking Dates, our uh, Iftar series here with Penny Appeal Canada. We hope everyone is enjoying the Ramadan. I know that it's a, a different Ramadan for us this year, but inshallah ta'ala, you are close with your family and friends, and you are all safe and healthy, and now getting ready to enjoy some good food after a long fast. We are now going to get to our next lecture, but first, a word from Penny Appeal Canada. I'm currently at the dump site. I wish you could just smell how repugnant the smell is over here. But the atrocious thing about this place is that young kids come and pick up whatever they can to either go and give to their parents to perhaps cook with or even find things that give to their parents to sell with. These kids aren't in school. These kids have no other prospects. I'm here at the Orphan Kind Project in Gambia, and this place was absolutely remarkable. If you look at most of Gambia, a lot of it is broken down, a lot of it isn't well maintained, but this facility is one of the few facilities that is very, very well maintained, mashallah. And when we sponsor these young children, they're given this opportunity to learn, and they are fulfilling their potential to thrive in this world, even though the odds may be against them. So my dear brothers and sisters, you know you have to support this program. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hi, my name is Amber Vongrat. Uh, I am a revert to Islam of about almost two years now, alhamdulillah. And today I'm gonna to be talking about how to heal yourself. So the power of spiritual awakening and how we can go through our own journey and discover our truth and start to love ourselves again. So for those of you who uh, don't know me, none of my family is Muslim. I came to Islam from my own spiritual journey. And I'm going to share a little bit about that with you today. Um, here is a quote that I wanted to share because I thought it was very, very beautiful. It says, the body is purified by water, nafs by tears, intellect is purified by knowledge, and the soul is purified by love. So for those of you, again, who don't kind of know what I'm doing, I'm an author and I have just recently came out with my first book. It's called Heal. Uh, powerful stories of healing providing hope and inspiration and my next book inshallah is called soul detox 15 principles to discovering your truth and freeing your spirit so when i talk about soul detox i really want you guys to know that uh, yes, the soul is very pure, but when I say detox, it's really from the dunya. It's everything in this worldly life that we get attached to and that we need to navigate through. So I want to be able to help you guys and give you practical tools on how you can really discover your own truth, whatever that may be. So this is myself. Um, this is on my 26th birthday, alhamdulillah. Um, so my journey to Islam. So I'm going to share a little bit about kind of how I got to where I am and, and how you can get to where you need to be, where you feel at peace and that you learn to love yourself again. Um, so for myself, I had gone through a really, really rough relationship um, back in you know 2016 when it ended. And that's kind of what I shared in this story. And so there's a bunch of different stories in here where people share um, 
stories of hope and it's very, very beautiful and learning how to heal. Um, it's a very difficult task to do. And so I want to share a little bit about what I said in this book. So I was at a point where um, I had learned unconditional love. I wanted to just give, 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 and I never really gave to myself. And so this is what I shared. It says, I learned a terrible lesson. My love was only worthless if I made it worthy and it couldn't be stolen if there was me. Um, you know, I said, I started to believe that I had nothing to offer except what people could take from me. And um, this is a very dangerous scenario to live in, you know. Uh, yes, it's okay to love somebody, but unrequited love is not okay. And so we really need to learn how to navigate through this world and start to love ourselves first before we can establish any relationship. And, um, so after this, I had hit rock bottom, you know, I thought I was going to have a family and I was going to be married and it was kind of all fell out from underneath me and uh, it shocked me to my very core. So I had to go, I had to be alone, which is the one thing that I was so terrified of, right? That a lot of us are going through right now with quarantine, but um, very, very hard to like learn to be in your own space and to be at peace. So um, I had done that. I had gone through my own spiritual journey. I started to notice things. I started to listen to the world around me. And um, I've always had very vivid dreams since I was very young and they started to come back. And I guess uh, when I was younger, they were, they were bad dreams. And um, again, the nightmares came back and I never understood what was happening. Uh, but I started thinking, you know, I don't know if I'm Buddhist. Like I always said God, but people in my family would not talk about it or shut me down or you know what I mean? And so Whenever, uh, you know, I had came back to God and I said, okay, I'm ready for this um, to see whatever would come. Um, Buddhism was the, one of the first things after Christianity. And then um, I went to the mall one day and this random lady from a tea shop had said to me, uh, you know, after she helped me, she said, can I tell you something crazy? And I was like, honestly, you can't surprise me at this point, you know? And uh, she said, are you spiritual? I said, yes. And she said, do you have crystals on you? And I was in the new age meditation where I was buying crystals and doing chakra meditations. And um, I said, yeah. And she's like, uh, something's following you. And I was like, how does this lady know this? You know, and because I knew it, I could feel it. It was, I had things chasing me in my house. I had all this spiritual stuff going on and no one to talk to about it. And so um, this is when she gave me Aitul Kursi. So she gave me a prayer from the Quran. And at this point in my life, I was saying, yes, <laughs> I was open. I was curious. You know what I mean? Everything that you believe up until a certain point, um, you have to let go of whatever you, whoever you think you are right now and be open to whatever it is that may come to you. So that's what I was doing. And I had told her, you know, I was going next door to see uh, if they had the third eye because I heard a lot of people use that for protection. And I just wanted to see how that felt. So I said, okay, I'll take this prayer. And uh, I put it on my playlist on YouTube and I went home and then my nightmare started to go away. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, okay, maybe the science part of my brain was like, maybe this is just a coincidence, you know? So um, I ended up not playing the prayer one night. I was like, okay, let's see what happens if I don't play the prayer. And um, I know in Islam, like we don't talk about dreams, right? Like you're not supposed to talk about dreams, but for the purpose of teaching and to share my story, I do share this dream. Uh, so if you're uncomfortable, you can feel free to, to log off, but this is what happened in my dream. So for me, my dreams are very, very real. And I was, I, there was this living room and there's a room in front of me and a room behind me. And I go into the living room and there's these two twins. So they're in the, the rooms. And they were scarred women. It's the first time I've ever seen scarred women in my dream. Um, I've had an angel visit me in my dream back in 2013, 2014. And I've had a demon visit me in my dream back in 2015. So um, I kind of, I, I knew how it was to be in both situations, like the feeling of safety versus the feeling of discomfort. And so um, whenever I was in my dream, I, it was dim and I go to the front of the room and uh, I reach up and I yell out the name Elsa out of nowhere. I had no idea where that name came from, but I fall to the ground and um, the woman in the front room, she comes up, she comes out and she comes up behind me on the floor and she puts her arms like up underneath me like this and she's holding me and it, it just felt so weird. Um, and so 
in my dream, um, I go and I reach to grab my phone that fell on the floor and I pick it up and I go to YouTube like I do every night and I type in A Y A and she sees me over my shoulder and she starts strangling me in my sleep. And I thought that I woke my whole house awake screaming. I was terrified. I could, I couldn't breathe. And so that was a really life-changing moment for me in my spiritual journey and, and where I kind of navigated to my own truth. And that's when I started praying like a Muslim. I was like, you know, what does that feel like? And, and from a, you know, new age meditation type of point of view, I was thinking like, you know, your third eye, your chakra, right? You ground it whenever you're submitting to God and you're putting your forehead to the floor. Um, just little things like that, where I was trying to make sense of it at the time. And um, someone had said to me, afterwards they had said you know a lot of what you believe in islam is in the quran and i was like what like what do you mean I, what is that you know and i didn't know anything so i started doing my own research but i just started saying yes okay so to summarize that is a short story of, of how i came to islam and how i started you know navigating through life and really discovering what worked for me excuse me sorry um so this is the first step that I want you guys to do in order to discover your truth. So the first thing I want you to do is to just start listening. You know, a lot of the times um, our nafs or our self will block us from things. And uh, I love this quote. There is a voice that doesn't use words. Listen, right? There's a light inside you, a ruh, the soul that God has placed inside of you. And you know, it's just, it's so beautiful when you can allow it to shine and allow things to feed it that aren't pride, that aren't greed, that isn't jealousy, that isn't lust, right? So start to pay attention to what you're doing and saying and start listening. Um, a really, really good exercise is to do things like um, try to be silent, right? Be silent for a day. Try not to um, talk as much, you know? I know for someone like me, it's it's hard sometimes, but because we love interaction, we love talking, but it really gives you that space to examine who you are and where you're at. And so the second thing that I want you guys to do, oh, sorry, I skipped ahead there. Um, the second thing I want you guys to do is to acknowledge your gifts. So for me, it was so overwhelming when I started to understand what my dreams were saying to me and what they meant. But it's hard because you have to really know who you can talk to. Um, so knowing that your gifts are for you, you know, we, when I was way before I was Muslim, you know, I would talk to, um, people who would read cards and people who would do, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff where they're using their gifts in, in a way that isn't for themselves. Right. And so that's where, um, you can see trouble starting to come arise. Right. And, and things that we don't approve of here in Islam. So understanding that if these gifts come to you, or if you already have them to, 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 understand that they're a gift and to really really take into account that they're for you right and for nobody else and um if they're if they're bad dreams that you just keep them to yourself right and say inshallah khair. and uh i think that it's beautiful but it's hard at the same time because who do you talk to right and i want you guys to know that you have someone to talk to you can come to me you can talk to me and um this is a safe space for you if you need someone to share kind of what's going on and how to navigate because um it was very hard on my own and you never know where you're going to get right like i like i said i had things chasing me and it was very very scary and so without the quran without ayatul kursi i don't know where I would be right now, right? If that never came to me. So alhamdulillah. The last thing that I want you guys to do is to lift the veils of your heart. So forget everything you think you know and be open to what you don't. Um, this is so important, you know, even um, as born Muslims, you have to really understand why you're Muslim, right? So you know um, who you are and to be firm and stand in your light. And I love that I can kind of, and hopefully be a bridge for you and, and understand that I've never felt more free in my life than when I've been in Islam. And as a woman from the West, it's, it's, um, it's different for some people to hear that, right? And they feel like, you know, it's, it's so different back home and they come to Canada and then there's so much freedom here and it's so different. It's not an Islamic country, right? So I just, again, I want you guys to know that I am here for you and to lift the veils of your heart or really what that means is when you go through things in life, you put a guard up 
right? You, your body, your mind, your soul wants to protect you. And so we put these boundaries and um, sometimes they're on purpose and sometimes they're not. They just happen as a result of something traumatic or something that's happened uh, to you that's hurt you. So how do we lift those and allow those to come, to come away and so that you can really, really be you? So how can you start walking the path of love? How can you start, you know, loving, but not giving completely to the point where you're not loving yourself? You know, that's what I talk about in my book, Heal. And um, detox your soul from the worldly life, you know, really, really give gratitude to the things that you have and to the things that, um, that most people don't, you know, even right now during Ramadan, you know, we go to Iftar, we have things like click and collect where you can get groceries and you just pick them up. And there's people who are having Iftar with just beans or rice. You know what I'm saying? So to really, really give gratitude to the things that you have and to let go of the material things outside of us. Um, separate and get to know your soul truth. So that's what I really, really love to teach is that your soul already knows and loves the truth, regardless of what faith that you come from. And if you can separate yourself from the things you know, the worldly life, the things that get to you, you can really get to know who you are and allow your soul to shine. Um, you can apply for a free soul detox, which is a 30 day program with myself where we go through um, in depth with you one on one on how we can get you to where you need to be. And so we go through your values, we go through uh, decluttering things in your house and doing things that really, really help you get down to the root of who you are. And, and that's free at bit.ly slash soul detox app application. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for listening to me, for being an ear and to hearing my story, at least part of my story. I look forward to working with you soon. And if you would like to get a copy of the book Heal, um, it is on my website and it is also um, available on Amazon next week, inshallah. So um, again, thank you so much for listening. I hope that this was a benefit to you. And um, again, my name is Amber Von Gratz and my website is www www.soulandlifestylist.com and so I look forward to uh to hearing from you guys and to working with you inshallah and Ramadan Mubarak um I'm so happy and honored to be a part of this uh of this video series that on YouTube and so thank you so much for the invitation I appreciate it and uh Eid Mubarak Assalamu alaikum everyone الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده تعالى نستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليم مزيدا my dearly beloved brothers and respective sisters, my name is Mamun Hassan. And today, inshallah ta'ala, uh, I want to begin by wishing you all a good Ramadan. And I am hoping that this Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala, is a beneficial one for you. It is a one where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emancipates you and I from the hellfire. And I pray that this Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala, is a Ramadan that uh, allows you to be reflective. Uh, and it's a Ramadan that allows you to think of all of your shortcomings. Uh, and makes you think of how to better yourself and ourself, inshallah ta'ala. And today, uh, I want to share with you a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this hadith is important because it reminds me, especially, especially now that we are living in this um, quarantine time, away from our community, we're not praying taraweeh together, we're not having iftars together, and uh, we are not seeing one another um, enough, really, I guess, or as we are used to in every single Ramadan. But it has uh, this 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 quarantine and this COVID-19 crisis that's happening it keeps on reminding me of this hadith because hadith itself um, is a signal from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the importance of community and being close to the community. Now Abdullah ibn Salam says that, and this he's the narrator of this hadith. He says the first thing that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say when he arrived in Medina is this hadith. Now the narrator is Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam is one of the, um, 
He is one of the Jewish people who, uh, one of the first Jewish people to become Muslim uh, when he, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived in Medina. And he says, the first thing I heard from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is this hadith. Now, I want to place this hadith in context for you. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has lived all of his life in Mecca. And um, the whole time he lived in Mecca alayhi salatu was salam, uh, and when he moved to Medina, the vast majority of people in Medina were not Muslims at that time. But it was known to all of them who are living in Medina that when the Prophet ﷺ arrived in Medina, he's going to be the political leader. So now when he speaks alayhi salatu was salam, he's speaking to everyone in Medina at that time, the Muslims and the non-Muslims alayhi salatu was salam. So what does he say to them? He says, and this is the Prophet I'm speaking now. He says, Ya ayyuhannas, afshu salam, wa at'ibu ta'am, wa silu al-arham, wa sallu bil-layli wa nasu nuyam, tadkhulu al-jannata bi salam, aw tadkhulu jannata rabbikum bi salam. Tayyib. What did he do, alayhi salatu wa salam? He gave them uh, four uh, pieces of advice, alayhi salatu wa salam. Now, the first piece of advice, the Prophet I'm saying, he, uh, well, first of all, let's actually break down the hadith. When he addressed everyone, he says, Ya ayyuhannas, O oh people, everyone who can hear me. Afshu salam, spread greetings, give salam to people. And the second thing he says, Wa at'imu ta'am, and go ahead and feed the food, provide food, basically is what he, the Prophet was saying. Qala, wa silul arham, and go ahead and uh, reach out to your next of kins. Wa sallu bil-layli wa nasu nuyam, and the fourth thing is, Go ahead and make your prayers at night time uh, when people are sleeping. And he says, as a result of these four things, تَدُخُلُوا جَنَّةَ رَبِّكُمْ بِسَلَامٍ You are going to enter into uh, the Jannah, the heavens of your Lord, uh, in peace, insha'Allah ta'ala. Why is this hadith uh, crucial and why is it important for us now? You know, we speak about taking things for granted um, because... When the Prophet uh, arrived in Medina, his first mission was to create a community of the Muslims. And this uh, creation of the community required some actual practical steps والسلام, that he gave to the people. And those are the actual four practical steps. He wasn't talking theoretical talk. He was speaking to them uh, essentially about things that they can actually do والسلام, so they can go ahead and, and, and do it and, and create this community. Uh, and we have taken this for granted because the truth of the matter is even if Shah salam like this whole idea of saying assalamu alaikum to each other it is no longer um, something that is well practiced by the vast majority of Muslims no illa man rahim Allah you would uh, go about uh, your life uh, and you would walk around and hardly ever you will find a Muslim who would say assalamu alaikum unless you are in a mosque or so on right and if Shah as salam this whole idea of giving salamu alaykum, in itself is a beautiful idea because what it is, when you give yourself salam, when you walk into a place and you say salamu alaykum to the people who are sitting there, what are you doing? You're doing one of three things or you're doing all three things. The first thing is that you are telling the people, you're giving them, uh, I guess, really uh, a proclamation. You tell them, <laughs> I come in peace. <laughs> That's basically what you're actually doing. But not only are you telling them you come in peace, you're telling them that you're coming in peace, that you are going to stay in peace, and that when you leave, you're also going to leave in peace, that you are not going to harm them. That's the first thing. And I like to use the example of, um, you know, someone walking into a place. I always say, you know, um, imagine yourself in a mosque, for instance, or in an elevator, for instance, right? And uh, all of a sudden, a person who's intimidating looking uh, walks into this actual elevator. Now, you don't know this person, and he looks intimidating for you, so you don't really know what he's going to do to you. Let's say he's a person who's very large in his size, and as, as he's walking into um, the elevator, as soon as he sees you, he smiles and he says, Assalamu alaikum. Now, all of the worry that you had when you saw this person would go out the door the moment you actually hear him saying assalamu alaikum. Why is this? Because you immediately understand the fact that this person's intention is actual good intention. So that's the first thing. You're actually making a statement, a 
statement that you're coming in peace and that you are a person of peace. What is the second thing? The second thing that you're doing when you say salamu alaykum to people, you're actually telling them or making dua for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace be upon you. You're making dua for them, you're in a sense really saying to them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you in peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you peace. And that's, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful dua to give to people because, you know, especially nowadays, people are living through this sense of anxiety and people are living through these uh, hardships that they don't really know what's happening. When you, you make dua genuinely to the people, you say, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you peace, ya akhi. The third thing is that you're actually doing here is, and, and by the way, as you so understand, peace is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're making dhikr as you're actually walking um, into this place itself. So you're showing people uh, your intention as well. So that is the first thing. And salam, my brothers and respected sisters, has always, always been, you know, just not just the whole idea of assalamu alaikum, but even just when you walk into a place and you say hi to somebody's greetings has always been a reason for ulfa, for um, this whole idea of mawadda, this whole idea of love, this whole idea of uh, making people feel at ease and making people feel good uh, about you being in there. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's so many hadith about this whole idea of salam. قَالَ تُدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ This is this is a very famous hadith on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, you are not going to enter Jannah until uh, you believe. And uh, you won't believe until you love one another. Would you want me to tell you about something that if you do, you are going to love one another? قَالَ أَفْشُوا السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Go ahead and spread greetings amongst each other. And this is... And subhanAllah, um, when the Prophet tells you this is something that's going to create love between you at a time um, when we need that love, you know what I mean? Uh, we need that love. Uh, it's something that we should always, always continue on doing. And it's also haq, you know, subhanAllah, the Prophet uh, when he says, Qala haqqul muslim al muslim, the rights of a Muslim upon another Muslim, sit. There's six things that are rights upon a Muslim. And the first one of them all, um, if you meet him, you go ahead and you give him salam. And uh, subhanAllah, uh, you know, nowadays we go through this whole idea of uh, uh, we give salam. But we don't give salam to everyone. We give salam to only those whom we know. And not even those whom we just know, but those who are really close to us. Uh, we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith Abdullah ibn Amr, um, that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال يا رسول الله أي الإسلام خير what part of the Islam is the best part and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال تطعم الطعام وتقرئ السلام على من عرفت ومن لم تعرف you feed food and you give salam to those whom you know and those who you do not know so this whole idea of giving salam giving salam alaykum to people is not something that is only reserved for those whom you know no you give salam to everybody who deserves salam. Everyone whom you think is, in, is worthy of salam itself. And, uh, you know, subhanAllah, um, salam itself, you know, we give salam to people. It's, it's, it's like, a, a, it's an increase in your reward. You know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when a man came and he says, says assalamu alaykum. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said 10. Another man came about and he said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said 20. And then a third man came, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, 30. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was kept on, the, the more you give salam, the more reward you would get. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept on counting the rewards for them. So the one who just said, Assalamu alaikum, got 10 rewards. The, the one who said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, he got 20 rewards. And the, the last one who came said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, got uh, 30 rewards. And this is important, my brothers and respect this. this these are practical um, wasaya from the Prophet and practical advice from the Prophet given to you. When you see someone else, give them salam, ya akhi. Say, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Don't be shy. Um, don't uh, lower your head and just keep walking. No, look at somebody in the eye and say, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, so this was the first thing. Afshu salam. What is the second advice that the Prophet ﷺ gave to the people? The second thing he says, قَالَ وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ The second thing is, give food. And I want to, uh, I want you to pay attention to something here, um, for those of you who speak Arabic. The Prophet ﷺ didn't say, feed those who are poor. Obviously, he means that. He means, عليه الصلاة he actually means, feed those who are poor the food. Because you don't need to feed those who are rich. Um, but he doesn't say that explicitly, عليه الصلاة He actually says, provide food, feed food. 
Why does he say that? Um, and uh, I think Allah Ta'ala Alam is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here is trying to create an environment where people sit together and eat together and feel each other's um, livelihood. And this is really important. This doesn't happen unless you always sit together. So those who are rich and those who are poor sit around the same type of table. They sit around the same type of plate and they eat together. That's when a community uh, it starts to actually develop. And also when you just provide food, you don't say this food is just for the poor people. Um, you don't embarrass those who are poor. A lot of people who are, uh, who are in need for food, my brothers and respected sisters, um, they don't actually come out and say we are in need for food. <laughs> they don't do that. They would rather go hungry than to ask people for food. So rather, what you should do is you should actually provide food, period. So um, I know nowadays it doesn't really happen. Unfortunately, this is one of the things that we're missing in this Ramadan, which is that we're not um, holding uh, iftars. We're not uh, inviting each other for iftars. But you can still provide food. There are so many different types of services uh, where you can just... Uh, you know, provide food. And I always say, you know, this Ramadan, more than any other Ramadan, you can think of a family that is in need. You can think of, not even a family that's in need, it's just in a family, and you can uh, order them something, uh, and order that food, and that food gets delivered to them. You know, and, and it'd be a beautiful thing to actually have. And Ta'am uh, Ta'am, my brothers and respect, this is providing food. It is um, an amazing uh, source of rewards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in, in describing uh, the righteous, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they feed the food to those, uh, even ala hubbihi, ala hubbi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala miskina and those who are poor, wa uh, yatiman those who are orphans, wa asira and those who are also um, uh, they, they are uh, in jail or they are, they are jailed. But what do they feed those people for? We feed you solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want from you any jaza, we don't want any reward, and we don't want you to be thankful. We don't want you to say thank you. This, this is not the whole idea. And this, my brothers and respect this, this is, is a very, very important aspect of our religion as well, uh, providing food. So, first thing the Prophet said, قَالَ أَفْشُوا السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Second thing, قَالَ أَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ And um, um, uh, it's a hadith, a very famous hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, when a man came to the Prophet ﷺ, he says to him, O Prophet of Allah, uh, tell me about something that is going to give me Jannah. And the Prophet ﷺ said something very simple, قَالَ عَلَيْكَ بِحُسْنِ الْكَلَامِ وَبَذْلِ الطَّعَامِ you want to go to Jannah? Speak nicely to people and give food. <laughs> and this is, it's, it's an amazing and easy type of reward. Like there's just, there's not much at all that you need to do in order for you uh, to get a uh, reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this, um, this whole idea of providing food, especially for those who are in need for it. Uh, or giving food in a day, um, the masghaba means a day that people are very hungry, a difficult day for people. Um, but not only to those who are poor, just like we said, food is also supposed to be something that we share with those whom, uh, who are poor and those who are not poor. It's, it's, it's better to give it to those who are poor, but you can also honor other people. Prophet Sallallahu for instance, you know. قال من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فلا يؤذي جاره ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم ضيفه. This is, uh, uh, you know, the Prophet ﷺ when he's saying, whomever believes in Allah and 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 the hereafter, let them not harm their neighbor. And then the second thing, whomever believes in Allah subhanahu wa taala and the hereafter, let them go ahead and honor, uh, be generous to their what, to their guests. And you know. How do you become honorable and, and, and how do you honor your guests? How do you become generous to your guests? You give them food and you provide this food to them. Okay, so what is the third thing? The first thing we said, the Prophet ﷺ said, Afshu salam wa at'imu ta'am. And the third thing, qala, ha, wasilu al arham. And, you know, Siratul Arham, my brothers and respects, I don't even know how, when to, can, to speak about this and, and, and how to stop about it. Reaching out to your next of kins is one of the most important aspects and rights that you have over your family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. Um, 
many of us as Muslims, we live in uh, away from each other, from our families. If we come from a different country, we have uncles, we have aunts uh, who live in different lands. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, forgive us all. But these people who live far away from us, these family members who live far away from us, have such a huge right upon us. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, you know, to, to show you how important this whole idea of silt al rahim this whole idea of being close to your next next to kin uh, it says qala taqullah allati tasa'aluna bihi wal arham allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you know um, he says to you be fearful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one whom you ask uh, uh, with and the arham yani subhanallah it is it is a an amazing and important right upon you and the most important of those are uh, the rahim of your parents connect with your parents these are times that are strange these are times when um, unfortunately nowadays in order for you um, you know to show love to your father who's elderly to show love to your mother who's elderly you actually have to stay away from her and this these 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 are the things that are these days are making us think uh, about things that we used to take for granted this whole idea of just going out and getting a hug from your father man getting a hug from your mother now you are afraid of hurting them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it uh, prescribed upon you that you worship no one else uh, but him and that you treat your family and your parents uh, well قَالَ فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفِي وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا As they get older, um, treat them well. Don't even speak ill. Um, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفِي And don't even, don't, even, don't even get irritated with them uh, within by yourself. <laughs> you know, this whole idea of uff. It's not something that you say loudly to your parents. Don't even think of actually saying that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال لا يدخل الجنة قاطع رحم No one who has disconnected themselves from the rest of their family is going to enter Jannah. And this is a very dangerous thing. Very, very dangerous thing, my dearly beloved brothers and respected sisters that we should be aware of. Uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of us, inshaAllah. And uh, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is all Prophet of Allah. I have a family... Um, you know, I have a family. Uh, I reach out to them, but they don't reach out to me. And I do well, I do good things for them, but they always disconnect me. Uh, and I'm nice to them, but they're very mean and rude to me. So the Prophet وسلم, said to him, if the matter is the same way that you think it is, uh, then... Uh, it's as if you are <laughs> taking all of the rewards. Anyways, قال, قال uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always give you support upon this and over them as long as you are this way towards them. This is an important thing, my brothers and respected sisters. Reaching out to your family and to your, um, your rahim is a reason for you to be happy in this dunya and in the hereafter. The Prophet sallallahu says في حديث أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال من سره أن يبسط له في رزقه whomever would want that his sustenance, his rizq first of all, who doesn't want their income to increase even though rizq is not just income but who doesn't want um, the rizq to increase قال من سره أن يبسط له في رزقه أو ينسى له في أثره فليصر رحمه uh, whomever wants to increase from the rizq uh, let them reach out to their next of kins. And the reaching out to the next of kins is going to increase from your sustenance, it's going to increase from your income. Um, طيب. The, so we spoke about three. The first one we says, uh, the Prophet said, Afshu salam, atim al ta'am, wasil al arham. And then this is the final one, which is sallu bilayli wa nasun yam. Pray at night time when everyone else is sleeping. And this is also something that is beautiful and something that uh, reminds us of Ramadan. My brothers and respect, this is Qiyamul Layl. Praying at night time is a beautiful, beautiful ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, 
you know, speaks about um, those who are right to the Jaffa, Junubum al Madaja, Yadun Rabahum Khofam wa Tama. You know, he speaks about those who are righteous. They don't like being in bed at night time. They go ahead and they call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They stand up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the best time to be alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me tell you something. Um, Taraweeh was important when we were all together. And it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, because you're a part of the community. But when you're all alone and there is no one around you and it's just you and your Lord there is a special feeling about this prayer that you're only going to feel um, and it is something that's going it's, it's going to be an addiction for you you're going to love it and praying the night time ideally beloved brothers and respect this is a beautiful beautiful ibadah that you want to stick to uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one time speaking to Abdullah ibn Amr al-As قال يا عبد الله لا تكن مثل مثل فلان يا عبد الله don't be like so and so on uh, he used to pray the night prayer and then he left it so the Prophet was saying to you continue on praying uh, this night prayer continue on sticking to the salah uh, and the Prophet also makes this beautiful dua قال رحم الله رجلا may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon a man uh, he woke up at night time uh, and then he prayed and then he wakes up his wife and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says and if she doesn't want to this the process is still saying and if she doesn't want to wake up this his woman doesn't want to wake up then he takes a little bit of water and he throws it in her face why is this because it shows you the actual love between those those two people the the, the man and the wife I, I, you know as my wife uh, I don't want to go to Jannah without you. I'd like for you to join me in this Salah itself. And that's the, the beautiful thing about this. Um, so here, my brothers and respect, this is the hadith that I want to share with you today. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And again, I'll uh, talk to you about why it's important and why um, I chose to speak to you about this hadith. It's because it's a hadith that has brought, really honestly to me, uh, so many of the things that I used to take for granted, you know, being with the community, saying assalamu alaikum to everyone whom I love and, 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 and being around the brothers in the masjid and, 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 and at work and all kinds of places. I, I, you know, I, I really miss that. I miss you all. And I, I you know, I, I don't know how else I can do this, even though I see a lot of people, you know, through Zoom and through phone calls and everything else. But uh, the truth of the matter is nothing is not the same as when you check on, on, on each other. And you still you can. So even though Salaamu Alaikum uh, is a greeting that you should spread out all the time, you should now still reach out to your friends. You still reach out to your community members. You still reach out to those who are uh, in need for you. Now more than any other time, really, if you think about it. Qala, Afshu Salam. And the second thing is, Atahim Al-Ta'am. And this is also, you know, in Ramadan, I honestly used to love eating with the brothers. And... Uh, and, and having guests at my house and going to visit other people and eating in their homes it, it was such a beautiful thing um, because we catch up on a lot of things you know I don't know if you if it's the same thing or not but when you're eating with someone else you let down your guard you speak um, honestly you um, give them your heart and you also listen uh, and not only that, you actually get to feel them out. You know, when you serve a specific type of food, a certain type of food, you see the reaction of uh, your guest to this type of food. You bring uh, a, a, a happiness to them when you, when you, when you just, you know, speak into your. Um, if you're cooking something for them, you go ahead and you say, you know, like what is what is going to be something that's going to make this person happy? Let's make them this type of food. Let's make them. It is something that brings happiness and joy to you. So, Afshu Salam, Atiyam Al Taam, Wasil Al Arham, and this is the. Uh, important one that we talk about don't just reach out to those who reach out to you from your family members reach out to all your family members those who are connected to you through your father and your mother um, through your mother then your father uh, reach out to those who are connected uh, to you through your family members even if they have a problem with you even if you're having an issue with them even if they are not practicing whatever excuses you give yourself not to speak to people even if they are um, they do things that you don't approve of don't disconnect yourself from the rest of your family make sure you are continuously with them and that you're connected to them and the last thing is connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this month of Ramadan by having some salah uh, by yourself uh, Taraweeh was beautiful but now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you an opportunity to actually be all alone with Him uh, take advantage of this time inshallah and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to make this month of Ramadan a month for us um, that is a blessing and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this month of Ramadan a month for us that is um, is going to be a reason for us to enter into Jannah Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa afina wa afana Allahumma arham mahatana wa abana Allahumma aghfir al-muslimina wa al-muslimat al-ahyai minhum al-amat Allahumma arham hatana wa abana ya hayya qiyum al-samawat Allahumma laka alham Allahumma laka alham Allahumma laka alham Nastaghfiruka rabbana wa natubu ilayk La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna minal talimeen La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna minal talimeen My dearly beloved brothers and respected sisters If I said anything that is inaccurate strictly for me from the shaytan If I said anything that is uh, proper strictly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his blessings and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase you and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to grant you all the best of Jannah insha'Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حيا على الصلاة Allah